Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. Progressive radicalism and Judeo-Christian worldview, are they compatible, and what do they say to one another? Hi, I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. You know, Matt, the country, America, was founded upon a Judeo-Christian worldview. Not everyone was Christian, but they subscribed to a Judeo-Christian worldview, which says that there is a God who is a creator, and God created us and infused us with certain liberties. This is reflected, obviously, in the Declaration of Independence, among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that government has one singular purpose, and that is to protect these God-given rights, completely fundamentally different than how the French created their government and the French Revolution proceeded on a completely different philosophical foundation than the American Revolution proceeded. And it's those very foundations that progressive radicalism is seeking to undermine today. And the question is, can the two really coalesce? Uh, what do they say to each other? And can someone with a Judeo-Christian foundation or worldview really support a progressive radical position? Yeah, Matt, and of course progressive, the term progressive is code for, for liberal. Uh, it's code for Marxist, for socialist, for humanist. All of these things are kind of combined and thrown in the, in the progressive basket clearly uh, and expressly. The United States Constitution, the framers, was created within the framework of the Judeo-Christian worldview. If you envision a circle, uh, this is the Judeo-Christian worldview. Smack in the middle of that is our Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution with the Bill of Rights, the unalienable rights uh, therein. Outside of that circle, in a completely separate worldview over here, is the progressive worldview. Notice where the Constitution is. It's over here within the framework of the Judeo-Christian worldview. That's why we see within the progressive worldview from a judicial philosophy, for instance, this idea that the Constitution is a living, breathing document that can change with the whims of the day. That's because we're talking about progressive whims that are incompatible and inconsistent with the United States Constitution. So progressives view the United States Constitution as an incompatible something that has to be bent and changed and gotten around rather than something that works in harmony with our worldview to protect both individual rights and the rights, yes, I'll use their language, of the collective. Yeah, and progressivism is more like evolutionary. It's consistent with their view of a living constitution that changes over time. And when you ultimately have one model that actually says there is a God and there's obviously absolutes as a result of that creation and the creative order through laws of nature and nature's God, as the Declaration speaks about, those absolutes travel through time. They don't change. They are not progressive in the sense. They're not evolutionary in that sense. They are fundamental foundational values, among which is life. Uh, life is one of those preeminent rights that transcend time, history, and culture, and it must be protected. If you don't protect the right to life, you're not going to protect somebody's right to property or liberty or the right to pursue happiness, as the Declaration of Independence says so. But if you move over to the more of the progressive, where God is a fictitious imagination or doesn't even exist or is not taken very seriously, you have this evolutionary, progressive, changing ideas that change from person to person, change from court to court, change from generation to generation. It was good for you, but it's not good for us. You know, I understand you respected the life, right to life, but now we have freedom of choice and the right to be able to have reproductive autonomy, mm -hmm. to have our own destiny in our own hands. In other words, you have a right to kill children? Yeah. Uh, that is all of a sudden now okay, but it wasn't okay before? I mean, that's the bankrupt uh, foundation of this progressive liberal movement. Matt, I'm reminded of, of Justice Elena Kagan at her confirmation hearings where she was asked by a U.S. senator, I believe I'm not 100% sure that it was Coburn, uh, Senator Coburn from Oklahoma, asked if she believed in the precepts of the Declaration of Independence. She refused to answer. Uh, that's because progressives don't agree with what, what is inherent within the Declaration of Independence, that we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They can't 
agree with those precepts because the progressive movement is A, anti-God, B, uh, anti-life. They embrace a culture of death through abortion, homicide, and, and even on the tail end of life. So Elena Kagan, I think, encapsulated in her failure, her refusal to answer that question. We, we know what her answer would have been. No, she doesn't agree with it. And again, that just goes to this idea that they can redefine, and it's a pseudo-utopian mindset that they believe that mankind has the ability to create a utopia through progressive policies. We saw how that worked out in Stalinist Russia. We saw how that worked out in Nazi Germany, in Mao's China and elsewhere around the world. And you know, uh, this may uh, rile some of you, but uh, it's not a political statement. But if you look at President Barack Obama and now the Democratic Party, uh, as it has uh, continued to morph under his presidency, the Democratic Party during the convention of 2012 ultimately did not want to have God in the platform. And no matter how many times you replay that vote, it was not voting uh, over. Uh, majority wise to put God back in the platform. They did not want to support Well, describe Israel. the vote again. What, what happened? They took it out and then they were going to put it back in, right? Right. And they had a voice vote in this huge convention center. And the voice vote was more against than for. It, the wall so they shook, did another they voice no. vote. Yeah. Uh, for, and then they finally did another voice vote and uh, that voice vote was still more against than clearly for. Clearly didn't pass. But the chairman said he uh, called it as uh, the other way, completely the opposite, because the rule of law within progressivism and liberalism doesn't matter. There you is can do no whatever you want law. to do. You can do whatever you want. The <laughs> law changes based upon your own political ideology and your agenda. So what we have is a party that has become progressive, very liberal. How can you associate with that political party? Now, there's people that are off the rocker in the Republican Party as They're well. They're progressives as well. And yeah. progressives. But as it relates to that particular party, it has gone over the edge with regards to an anti-God, anti-life, anti-marriage very progressive, liberalism, socialist type of policy under this leadership of Barack Obama. You know, Matt, I've, I've had people ask me before, how do you deal with these progressives who are constantly attacking you, smearing you in the media and so forth? And, and, and I say, first of all, I laugh at them. Uh, then I uh, fight against them and fight against their policies. And then I pray for them, uh, because as Christians, we're, we are commanded to love everybody. And, and progressives, I think, uh, are just, they're just fooled. They're just embracing a worldview that is not rooted in reality. It's, as I mentioned before, it's pseudo-utopian. And without the wisdom of the ages, without, without an understanding that there is a sovereign God who created each and every one of us and has written on uh, our hearts, his natural law and, and the truths that aren't up for a vote, words like marriage that cannot be redefined. They are, it, marriage is what it is. But if you embrace a worldview that says, no, uh, we can, you know, this Orwellian newspeak where we can just say something is, is different and redefine a word to mean something that it clearly doesn't, that's progressivism. It's out of touch with reality. It's like the uh, FDA. They redefine conception, not from the moment of uh, conception or pregnant. They redefine pregnancy. It's not the moment of conception. It's the moment of implantation. They just redefine words so that they can have their own ideology. Well, no, pregnancy is when you are pregnant, and that is at the moment of fertilization, not the moment that it implants on the uterine wall. They redefine, like President Clinton, it depends upon what the meaning of is is. <laughs> they redefine the terms like Orwellian uh, in the nature, and ultimately, you know, because rules and objectivity makes no difference. And at Liberty Council, you know, elections matter, and people who are in the political uh, limelight and the leadership matter. We see that whenever we go to courts, and we have to argue before progressive judges that are nominated by progressive presidents, and the rule of law doesn't matter yeah. to them. And it's like arguing two plus two equals four to a mathematician, and the person says, if they're the one making the decision, in my court, in my classroom, it no longer equals four. It equals five. And in certain circumstances, I can even make it equal six. How do you reason with something like that? You've actually lost the foundation and the platform on which to reason. Yeah, uh, we have become a nation of men instead of a nation of laws, and we know that that does not end well. Well, I encourage you to learn more about our founding principles. Uh, we have resources at Liberty Council. We have David Barton's book called Original Intent, a very uh, good resource. I encourage you to order that book at lc.org or my book, the uh, book Take Back America, 
Take Back America and David Barton's original intent. I think they're must-reads. Go to Liberty Council's website and order them at lc.org. That's lc.org. You can also call us at 1-800-671-1776. Make sure you plug into the resources of Liberty Council. You can also get more information at libertycouncil.com, another one of our websites. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.